you to the L E I E U, -U Julie. I don't think you can what? spell Julie. Yeah, you can, Jake. <laughs> Regardless of what you see on this program, please drink responsibly. Welcome to Drunk History Black Stories. My name is Julie Adenug, and I'm joined by two very special guests who have a very important story to tell me about a black icon. Let's welcome Marv Abbey and Tolly T. Ba, 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 ba. <sighs> Come on, cheers, guys. We've got to start this properly. Cheers. Here we go. Do you reckon they cheesed in 1960 in Nigeria? <laughs> <laughs> we are here to tell you a story about Pumulayo Bantam Kuti. Pumulayo Kuti is the it girl. There was so much we need to thank Pumulayo for. Martin. Mama Pumulayo. Without her, there would be no Fela Kuti. Mm -hmm. Number one. There would be no Afrobeats. Mm -hmm. Wow. Number two. Okay. He's the founder of Afrobeats. That's Afrobeat. very factual. But I don't want her credit to be based of her loins. Do women have loins? <laughs> Born in 1900. First female, a woman, sorry, to go to a grammar school I in Nigeria. I love that you corrected Look yourself. at you correcting I'm female! So Raise a glass! Raise a good cheers. Well no, done. cheers, cheers. Come I'm on. so proud it's of you. So proud it's of you. It's 2023, isn't it? So she got married, she became a teacher. She had fell out at some point. At Nigeria at that point in time, she was seeing so many injustices around. And that's when she started to say, nah, you know what, I'm not feeling this. Not right. on it. There was a system in, power, in place that was kind of disenfranchising mm. the black people. So what the British done was they went made it seem like we're not here. They sent their messages through the chiefs of areas, collecting taxes on behalf of the British Empire. So there was a king called Aleke Ademola mm. the second, yeah? And he was the guy from... Abekuta. Thank you. So he was the enforcer for that area. He would get a bunch of his soldiers mm -hmm. to go to the market mm -hmm. and... and, and demand money from these women. I'll try and strip them naked, because in terms of Nigeria, when someone got stripped naked, it was a, it was seen as like a disrespect to like shame, like it was yeah. taboo. So oh. if you got stripped naked, it was like a par. Problem was, in within the market, you're supposed to earn a certain amount a year to get taxed. Okay. But he was taking the mick. He didn't care. He didn't care. Our big mummy, Fumilayo, mm -hmm. started the Abekuta Women's Tax Revolt because she just wasn't happy with the fact that women were getting taxed so much when they shouldn't have been. Have you ever been to Nigeria? <laughs> Raw. She's questioning you. Now. No, genuine question. Because yeah. I was going to describe. Julie, hold her stomach like, oh, I feel sick. <gasps> you know who you should ask if they've been to Nigeria? Who? The screen. I don't know if you people have been to Nigeria, <laughs> but I think it's important to build the ambiance. Let me picture it for you. And S S, please. Uh, S S S. Someone is here. They're selling beans. Someone is here. They're selling Ankara. Someone is here. They're selling Gary. Someone is here. They're selling F4. Someone is here. They're selling F4. Like, I think people, it's busy. People are listening thinking, what it's is F4? What is F4? What is this? Just for those that what don't that? understand, what's just, this is translation. There are loads of people everywhere selling loads of things. Mm -hmm. That's what she just said. Basically, in the market, oi, mate, you want some beans? It's not oi, mate, no. Oi, oi mate, you want no. some oranges? Formula, oi, mate, you Formula want some avocados? She actually wouldn't have liked that. She wouldn't have liked she wouldn't that. that. She wouldn't have liked that. From what because I know of her, from what you've told me, she from wouldn't have liked that. Me personally, because I know her. Yeah. When did you meet? In 1900. In 1900. <laughs> <laughs> we were born then. Market is a busy place, and it's mostly banned by women, because one thing about Nigerian women, we're going to get <laughs> done. You hear me? It's true still. And one thing about Nigerian men, they're not going to work at the market. They're not going to work at the market. <laughs> at all. You went to the, the like, British embassy at the time to say, listen, we're not having this. Ele taxwa te bani representation. Don't know what you're talking about, mate. Uh-uh. I be old. I won't share. Ele taxwa te bani representation. I said it three times, love. Don't know what you're talking about, mate. <laughs> so she said, fine, I'll speak in English. <clears throat> There is no taxation without representation. Why are you saying in the first place, love? <laughs> because we're in Nigeria, and in Nigeria, <laughs> you speak language. <laughs> <laughs> the king heard about what was going on, and he got vexed. So they took her to, like, a court, right? Yeah. And she's like, listen, this ain't it, you know, bro. So he's like, what? So they've taken her to, like, a kind of hearing court. They've fined her. All the women said, you know what? If you don't listen to us, we're going to all strip naked. Naked. If you know any Nigerians or are a Nigerian, you know that shame is a lucrative currency. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have a question. Mm -hmm. You guys said earlier in your amazing story that being naked was yeah. a shameful thing. Yeah. yeah. So why were they saying that? It's that like when we take back the word slut. Oh. So imagine that a bagger woman. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
no taxation, blah, blah, blah. They were like going, you have been using your penis to fuck us. Oh. It wasn't, like, it wasn't that exactly. It, was. <laughs> it wasn't. I feel like Marvin. You, you busy Marvin, <laughs> I'm enjoying this version right, of no the story. No problem, no problem. Say it again. No. You have been using your penis to fuck us, acting like you are our husband mm -hmm. for far too long. What you didn't realise is that I've got what they call power. Mm. AKA Buswa Power. In 1900, she wasn't even around as a word. Just what are you talking about? I did yell about. Otikpe tetin lo eko yi fun authority. Awa amalo vagina fun authority. Back in them days, and as Nigerian, that was seen as vulgar. So because they're bringing shame onto the king, the Abekuta land and the market, mm -hmm. the king was like, you know what? If people hear about this, this if chief of um, um, Apapa or chief of um, Negos Island or chief of um, Ibado hears about this, it's they can think I'm an idiot. Yeah, yeah. So he just runs away. OK. So I guess that's like victory from Oluwa from, from, from Inayo. That was, a, that was a victory because they didn't have to pay tax anymore. So 1947 now, she goes to England. And when she goes to England, she goes as a representative for Nigeria. She made it clear that she weren't feeling what was going on in Nigeria. Yeah. She wanted independence. independence of Nigeria. Yeah. She said to them in England, before you man come over here, we were good. Just to get her word out there, she wrote an article. And where was it? In a communist magazine. And she was cussing everybody. everyone. To whom it may concern. Obviously, world. England being England, we're not happy with they that. They tried to take her visa away. Well, she said, so? So? You think I care? Yeah. I'm in hmm. Nigeria, where there is... <laughs> Yam in abundance. Yam. Plantain, moi moi. Moi moi. All of those tanks. So she was like, OK. Very delicious food. Swallow. So she cut. Britain and America realised that their threats were futile. So because of that, England were like... Allow it, it's not worth it. Allow pick it. your battles, they pick so, their battles, so, yeah. Nigeria gained independence in 1960. October the 1st, 1960. You know what I'm really sick of? Mm -hmm. I'm sick of the fact that women give birth to kids and we only big up the kids. That's why I didn't want to big up in the beginning. Yeah. Because fella, wow, what a guy. Yeah, of course, but he wouldn't be the guy if it wasn't for his mother. She was beefing kings. Whole kings, mm -hmm. making threats, winning the threats, going to court, saying, actually, I'm not paying that parking yep. fine. And then still going to the America and to the UK and I'm saying, I'm actually, I don't care what you are saying. Yep. We was good before you came in. Yep. Forget you guys. Coming back, then there's independence. For Melaya, wow. Fella was looking at his mum as in what she was doing. So Fella wasn't the justice warrior. Fella was like, actually, I'm not going to address an individual. I'm going to address the government. So he straight made a song straight for the Nigerian Zombies. government. He's in the studio now and he's like, you know what? This one is from Mumsy. <clears> Listen. <throat> mm, 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 mm. MC Fellas on the mic key. Bear man acting very face deep. A yam to the face. A yam to the face. A moi moi to the grin. Fella cooties <laughs> on the mic key. Bear man acting very face deep. A punch to the face, a kick to the knee. A hee hee. What rhymes with knee? <laughs> A knee, you he might want to hee hee. Whilst bad. I'm here, key key. Done, My mummy for like, for, for me like your knee. Kuti. Kuti. Come on, are you mad? Come on. Ayo. In your, in the, in the face. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, when he released that track, the Nigerian government were like, are you mad? Are you chatting L to him? Literally, a thousand soldiers oh, a came to his yard to arrest him. One thousand soldiers. His, his mum was there. And this is the saddest part of the story. I know oh. we've been laughing for the whole episode. Somehow she got thrown out of the second floor window. Obviously she's injured now. She's gone to hospital and obviously... She never made it. She never recovered from her injuries. And that was her end. That's how she died. But she died back in her son, innit? And that's why her son was so adamant in terms of carrying on the fight, like, he didn't, like, he was like, nah, man. Because the government mom. killed his mum, yeah. Mm. But also, she died for him, but she died with a powerful message, because I knew about the story about her being thrown out a window, but I didn't know the, what she had done for women Everything before that. that. Yeah. We are, like, shouting out for Minaya, because, like, the there point. are people 
who have laboured for us and done so much for us that shall never be in vain. The fact that I'm here in England. 100%. I'm on British television drinking alcohol. <laughs> what? I just <laughs> hope and pray that Nigeria as a country just has more women in government because like we have things to say, we make a difference and historically, history has shown mm -hmm. women, particularly Nigerian women, oh, get done. Mm. I feel like today this story that you two have given to me is a reminder that when we wake up every morning, someone who came before us in 1900, Mama Fumilayo Ransom Kuti, has empowered us to be the greatest that we can be and to never stop because we're going to raise our glass to a phenomenal woman. For Milayo, Ransom Kuti. Cheers. Cheers, guys.